All right, good evening, everybody. Good evening, wait a minute. It's the morning. <laughs> good morning, everybody. How's everyone doing? I'm live. I'm live, baby. How you guys doing today? It is Sunday, the 23rd of August, 2020. I'm Dark Side Phil, and I welcome you to yet another full and fun day of streaming here on Twitch. I hope you guys are excited for some good stuff today. Do you know what's going on today? Do you? Well, if you do, you know better than me. No, I'm just kidding. So, welcome, everybody. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Should be a good day, a good a variety of stuff here today. Finally getting into some good stuff in regards to the Near Automata playthrough. All right, finally, after going through two runs of stuff that we've almost already seen all of the entirety of, now we're going into brand new stuff, which is great. We're also going to have new stuff in Paper Mario later tonight. Um, a good week coming up, a good variety of stuff. I'm starting up a new game tomorrow, which we're going to talk about in a moment. A lot of good vibes going on. Yesterday, there was a big DC event that everyone's talking about. You got multiple games, multiple movies, all kinds of fun hype stuff coming out of that DC event, right? <clears throat> Yesterday was a really good streaming day for me. Uh, we had a, a lot of fun on the Vest Celebration, 250 streak Vest Celebration. Or Vestival 4.0. I got tons of positive feedback. People telling me it was a lot of fun. And they had a, they had more fun with that than they had previous Vest celebrations. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like something we want to keep up for future Vest celebrations, right? Um, and then we said goodbye to Ghost of Tsushima on the late stream. The epilogue stream, the platinum run. We did achieve the platinum trophy together. Which was very, very nice to say goodbye to the game. Because it was such a great game. So, good stuff all around. It's been a good time, and I'm looking forward to a full day of streaming today with all of you. Um, let's go ahead and let's talk about the schedule for the week, because now it's finally been determined what I'm going to be doing this coming week. And I hope it sounds exciting to you, okay? So, today, Near Automata, the C run, here on the stream. When I played this a couple days ago, I got into the C run, but only for about maybe 20 minutes. Um, we're going to be focusing on that today. This is the third and final run of the game where the plot is completely different. All kinds of new things apparently happen, and people have told me it's going to be absolutely mind-blowing. I don't know how that, what that means, <clears throat> but I guess we'll see, because it's going to be the first time I've ever seen it. I've never been spoiled on this, so I guess we're going to find out what happens today, okay? Maybe we'll finally get some answers uh, to things that we've been waiting for answers on, and uh, it should be fun, okay? So that's going to be the main gameplay stream. And then later tonight, it's the continuation of Paper Mario, the Origami King. <clears throat> now, I played this as the main gameplay stream back on Thursday, and we got very far. We completed the entirety of the Sandpaper Desert. So that means today when we pick up, we'll be able to finish that off and head into World 4 of five gaming worlds in the, uh, in the game. So we're going to see what's next. I don't know if we're going back to the ocean to try to get that streamer that was under the water or if we're going to be doing something different entirely. I have no idea. <clears throat> okay. So good stuff. Good streams today. Um, tomorrow, we are starting up something new. It is Batman Arkham City Remastered on the PlayStation 4. I have to download it. In fact, you know what? Just for the hell of it. Why not take a look live here? And let's see if it's available how much it is. Because I gotta get it tonight anyway. Why not just do it live, right? So let's see. Let's type in Batman. And see what comes up. Batman. Arkham Knight, Arkham Origins, Arkham Collection. There it is, the Arkham Collection. Now, wait a minute. They've got Arkham Collection. But then they've got Arkham City. Oh, PS Now. We definitely don't want that on PS Now. We want the Arkham Collection. Wait, what's this? Return to Arkham? Oh, wait, then what's Arkham Collection? Oh, it's all three games. Oh, I see. I don't need that. I need the Arkham... A return to... Batman Return to Arkham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, see? So this is interesting because back in 2016 is actually when they released this Batman Return to Arkham Collection. And it's Batman Arkham Asylum and Batman Arkham City... Uh, remastered for the PlayStation 4, sold as a bundle. And I was going to get it back then. 
and people told me, no, don't get it because the collection actually is quite bad. The frame rate and everything isn't optimized and it's really terrible. And a lot of people complained about it at launch. But apparently over time, they did b p patch it and fix it and made it better. It was just, you know, at launch it was rough around the edges, but then they fixed it up. So the good news is it's only 20 bucks. If I, if I had accidentally bought this whole Batman Arkham collection, that would have been 60 because that includes Arkham Knight which was a PlayStation 4 game. Um, that was back from uh, 2015. But I don't need Arkham Knight. I mean, I, I, already, have a, I already have that. So, we're going to go for this. Batman Return to Arkham Collection. Yeah. So, you know what? I might as well just get it and get it downloading. So, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow we start off with the Batman Arkham Collection. It's going to be Arkham City that we're going to be playing. Uh, someone yesterday asked me, why aren't I playing Arkham Asylum instead of Arkham City? Well, not to say that I wouldn't go back and play Batman Arkham Asylum. That's not out of, that's not out of the realm of, of uh, possibility. But people nominated and voted on games for a viewer's choice playthrough. And Arkham City was the game that won. Okay. So, well, excuse me. It came in third place. Okay. But... Basically, people wanted to see Arkham City because Arkham City, arguably, is absolutely the best game in the Arkham Trilogy. Arkham Knight is quite good, too, but Arkham City really makes you feel like Batman. You know what I mean? It really makes you feel like Batman. You're not driving around the Batmobile half the time like you are in Arkham Knight. <clears throat> it's more feeling like you are uh, the Batman, wandering around Gotham City, fighting random criminals, doing side missions and stuff. It's quite good. It's a very good game. And I'm actually excited to play it on PS4. What I'm hoping is that it does look and run better than it did on Xbox 360 when I played it back in the day. Which, if you're not aware, nine years ago. It came out in 2011, the same exact year as Skyrim. Because I remember it was a showdown between Batman Arkham City and Skyrim for Game of the Year for me. And I picked Skyrim with Arkham City so close behind it. Okay? So this is exciting. I'm excited to play Arkham City again. I've only played it once, ever. And I'm excited to play it again, uh, starting tomorrow. Why are we doing this? For a couple of reasons. Alright, the first reason is because the, the only other things really going on right now are a lot of small independent titles. Battletoads, um, Samurai Jack, uh, a DLC for Control, etc. And, and honestly, to be honest with all of you, even though some of those may be interesting... Number one, I don't know how long they'll be. Number two, I don't know uh, how much interest they'll garner. And I'm looking for something that's going to be a little bit more consistent because I've got this coming week and one more week before the new releases start hitting um, in the month of September. And so I want something that's going to be a little bit more meaty than, say, a game that I'll play once or twice and we're done, and now it's like, man, it wasn't very good. Um, so that's why, I'm, I, the number one, that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm doing Arkham City again. Number two... Because of all the Batman news that came out yesterday, which we're going to talk about in a minute, I'd like to recap some of the Batman news that happened at the DC Fandome event yesterday. Uh, notably, two different game announcements, which were pretty exciting. So, because of that, I feel it's very pertinent. Now would be an interesting time to play Arkham City again, now that everyone's all hyped about Batman. Let's play a little bit of Batman, okay? So that should be pretty fun. Starting tomorrow, okay? Starting tomorrow. Batman Arkham City Remastered uh, playthrough starting up, okay? What is going on? It looks like it was downloading, and now it looks like it's, it stopped. What the frick? All right, no, it's still going. It's just going slow. It was going, like, super fast, and then, like, went to a crawl. Well, that's PlayStation Network for you. Well, I'm glad I got it now, so it'll have plenty of time to download and install. Anyway... So, yeah, tomorrow, Batman Arkham City Remastered, starting up right here on the channel. It should be exciting. Tomorrow night, more Fall Guys to end my streaming week. I'm excited for that, obviously. I've played Fall Guys twice so far this week and had a lot of fun both times. And it's all on the line, and here's why. There is a limited edition Peabody outfit. That is Peabody, the character from Portal 2, available in the game only this weekend. And... It expires, I believe, tomorrow night. Um, you can't get it after that. The way to get them is to use 10 crowns, 
Well, I have eight. So I have to see if I can pull off two wins tomorrow night in Fall Guys to afford and purchase the Peabody outfit before it's gone for good from the shop. All right? <clears throat> so I guess we'll see. It'll be an exciting stream to see if I can get two wins tomorrow night. Okay? Then I am off on Tuesday. I return on Wednesday um, with either more near Automata or Batman Arkham City. I'm not sure which one I want to do yet. It doesn't really matter because I'm playing both over the course of the week multiple times. Um, in fact, what I'll probably do is one will be one stream, one will be the other on Thursday. Okay, so either near Automata or Batman. And then uh, Wednesday night, maybe more Fall Guys. Okay, we'll see. And then Thursday, whatever game I didn't play on Wednesday. And then Thursday night, probably some Fire Emblem Three Houses. Okay. Friday, Mar Paper Mario and the Origami King as the main gameplay stream. And then it'll be Throwback Street Fighter Friday night. And then Saturday, Sunday, it'll be more Batman and more Nier. And then those night streams will likely be maybe some Fall Guys and maybe Paper Mario. And then on Monday one of these games, and then probably more Fall Guys, okay? So, interesting. The thing is, I don't know how long the C run in Near Automata is. If it's as long as the A and B runs, then we're probably talking it'll take at least two streams to be, if not more. And plus, that's not the end of my Near Automata playthrough. There's also the D and E endings that people want to see me do. Now, those endings, FYI, uh, are basically just alternate endings to the C run, so as long as I have a save file, I should be able to go back and do the D and E endings without replaying the entirety of the run, okay? So I don't know how long it's going to take for me to beat Nier Automata. Now also, before the end of this month, there is one other thing I absolutely want to do. There is a new game called Tell Me Why from Don't Nod. This is the same company that made Life is Strange 1 and 2 and the other games, you know, spinoffs and stuff. Well, this is a new episodic game, and I definitely want to check that out, Okay. Um, I forget the exact release date. I wrote it down. It's near the very end of the month. So that's going to probably end up being one daytime stream near the end of the month. Um, so that is, in summary, that's what you guys can expect. It's going to be Batman Arkham City and Near Automata on the main gameplay streams with one stream of Paper Mario squeezed in there for good measure to make good advancement in the game. There's going to be a lot of Fall Guys on the night streams. There's going to be... Uh, some Fire Emblem, there's going to be a throwback Street Fighter stream, and then near the very end of the month, there's going to be this Tell Me Why game, okay? In early September is when we hit all the real high-profile new releases for the, the fall gaming season. We're going to start off with Marvel's Avengers, uh, the Tony Hawk collection. Um, in the middle of the month, there's a few interesting things, including uh, the Crisis remaster. At the end of the month, there's the Mafia remaster. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, coming up in the month of September for new releases, and it should be an exciting month, okay? Good stuff. Now, also, everybody, also, I have some speculation, and this is my speculation. I could be wrong. I'm speculating we are going to have <clears throat> a major announcement from either Sony or Microsoft or both by early September. I think in early September... These companies are going to realize they can no longer hold out when it comes to announcing the release date and pricing of their new next-gen consoles. That if they want people to actually be able to pre-order these things and logistically have it happen that they can be delivered at release, that they need to actually start doing this. I think what they're doing is they are purposely waiting. They want one company to go before the other so that they can counter with pricing. But the strategy is not working because both companies are just waiting indefinitely and not announcing anything. So I predict that early September, maybe the first week of September, all right, we're going to finally get our definitive answer on when are the new consoles releasing and what's the pricing. Um, so hopefully that's the case, okay? Hopefully that's the case. I don't know, but that's what I'm thinking is that's the case where, uh, you know, we will... Basically, have to wait and see, you know, have to wait and see what the hell happens here because it seems like both companies are purposely dragging their feet so that they can counter the other company's pricing announcement. But the way I'm seeing it is, let's say, for example, like speculation says, they're both going to come out in November. 
And there's speculation that it'll either be the first week of November because there's no scheduled new releases for the first week, or it's going to be Thanksgiving week, okay? One of those two weeks. I mean, that's all well and good, but that's only about a little over two months away. And you need to logistically have pre-orders in place so that companies know where they need to ship all these PlayStations, where they need to ship all these Xbox Series Xs. You can't just do it the week before and expect that everything's going to show up in time. It's not. You know, that's why they have pre-orders. That's why they pre-book these things. Um, so to me, that's like crazy that they're still holding out, still holding out. I definitely suspect it's going to be early September, all right? So obviously when we get more information about that, I'm excited to talk about that. And my, like I told you guys, I, right now it's looking like as long as nothing crazy bad happens, which I hope it does, and everything's been good recently, you know, you guys have been helping me and everything behind the scenes is working out. It looks like I should at least, at the very least, be able to afford one of the consoles and probably a couple accessories for it, um, depending on what accessories are available at launch. Um, obviously, I've told you guys, for me, my pick is going to be PlayStation 5. It's going to have games that I want to play at launch. And sadly, Xbox Series X, even though it will have games at launch, those games will also be available on Xbox One. So there's no reason for me to get the Xbox Series X at launch. You see? So... Things should be good at least, at least, um, in that regard. Now, here's the thing. If things keep going well, maybe I can afford both consoles, all right? In which case, that would be amazing. It would be just like last console gen, where I get to un live unbox these consoles as they arrive at my home. We get to hook them up together, check out the dashboards, the online capabilities, the pricing of games that launch, maybe even buy a few games and download them. And then those first few exciting days of a new console launch, I get to try out the dual, the new DualSense controller or the new Microsoft controller. I don't even know what it's called. <clears throat> and do all this new stuff. All right? You guys really loved the coverage I did of the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 at the launch of those last console gens. Those videos were super popular on YouTube, and you guys really liked the streams and everything I did. So that's why I really want to do it this way, same way with this new console gen. All right? So we'll see what happens. Okay? Um, but so far, so good. It's looking good because of you guys and your support. So thank you so much for your support. A total flip, seriously, a total flip from the situation I was in where now it looks like this is, this looks like I will be able to participate in the launch of these consoles, which is great. Okay? <clears throat> so good stuff. That's good stuff. Um, all right. Now, another reminder, guys. You guys have been voting over the last week for what kind of a gaming marathon I'm going to be doing in the month of September. I'd like you to keep doing that. I have not closed off the poll as of yet. I'm thinking I will leave the poll open for a few more days, and then the poll will end around the middle of this week, and then we will determine what marathon it will be, and then I'll open a new poll, excuse me, not a new poll, but a new post, where you guys could, could nominate games if the marathon that you guys choose is one where games need to be nominated, all right? So the choices for the gaming marathon that I'm going to be doing in September are as follows. Number one, a Indies marathon. Number two, a classic Mario games marathon. Or number three, a rage-inducing marathon. All right? From what I, what I understand, the voting is still very close. And if just a handful of people vote who haven't voted yet, you could totally flip the poll's results on its head. Okay? So please vote. Type exclamation point marathon into the stream chat. And that'll make the link pop up. You can vote or you just wait. Every 20 minutes or so, the link should automatically populate in the stream chat. You can click on it. Please vote. Your vote matters. And I'll be announcing the results of that poll around the middle of this coming week. Okay? Good stuff. Um, all right. So, ladies and gents, sounds good. That's a good variety of stuff coming up, right? Good stuff coming up on the streams. I'm excited to, to do Batman tomorrow because uh, I haven't played this game in nine years and i remember it being absolutely outstanding when i played it nine years ago and i'm looking forward to more yo keep in mind when i played it nine years ago there was no interactivity i wasn't direct capture or live streaming i'm actually gonna be able to show off how great this game was to a live audience you guys are going to be able to interact with me and help me out with the riddler puzzles that are so effing annoying because <laughs> let me tell you some of those riddler puzzles are ridiculous right yeah Pretty good. I can't wait for tomorrow. All right. Um. So outside of all that stuff, um, 
the only other thing I want to talk about is basically this this DC event yesterday because a lot was announced. Um, game wise, because first of all, we should talk about games before we talk about other media. Two new games. We got Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Right. So the Gotham Knights game is intriguing because it stars everyone but Batman. You've got Robin, you've got Nightwing, you've got Red Hood, and you've got Batgirl as the four protagonists of the game, and apparently you can swap between them and do different missions for each of them, which is kind of neat. It has an RPG-esque kind of formula, apparently, where these characters will actually level up and gain gain new abilities and stuff over the course of the game. That's new and different. Um, that's pretty neat. I'm excited for that. However, I'm skeptical because it's made by WB Montreal. And for those of you who don't remember, okay, WB Montreal is the same company that made Batman Arkham Origins. That was the spin-off title that was not actually part of the Rocksteady Arkham Trilogy. It was a cheap cash-in game that was made solely to make extra money for WB Games based on Batman's popularity and the fact that they were taking a little bit longer to develop Batman Arkham City. So... I didn't really like Arkham Origins. I felt that it it paled massively in comparison to the official trilogy. Um, it had a lot of bugs and issues, and it just didn't feel like a solid outing. It felt like they took the combat engine and the graphical engine from the Arkham games and stole it, just like copy and pasted it, and they handed it to a team that wasn't nearly as good. So the thing is that, you know, it's been a while since we actually got a game like this from WB uh, Games Montreal. So maybe they've learned and taken their time and learned from their mistakes, and this game will be outstanding. Or maybe it won't. But you know what? At least, at the very least, it's not Batman again, which is actually refreshing because we've now played a lot of games of Batman in it. And that's a good thing that now we'll finally have one that is not like that. Uh, it's everyone else, so at least you can say, well, it doesn't feel like Batman. Well, it's not supposed to. It's not Batman. It's everybody else, right? So that looks pretty good. That's coming out next year. We don't know when yet, but it's coming out next year. And then, basically just kind of a teaser for this Suicide Squad game, where you're going to be playing as various Suicide Squad members, um, trying to kill the Justice League heroes. And that's all we know. Like, there was no gameplay shown or anything. We don't even know what kind of a game it is, but it is made by Rocksteady. And Rocksteady made many good games in the, uh, <clears throat> the Batman franchise, so you would think that it's still going to be good, okay? <clears throat> so, we'll see. But that's coming out supposedly 2022. So we got two years to wait for the Suicide Squad game, okay? Now, outside of that, there was all this different movie news, giant movie news. You got a new Suicide Squad movie directed by James Gunn, the same guy who directed the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy movies for Marvel, and it stars what a cast... It's got people like Idris Alba, John Cena, uh, among just a few. There's like a ton of, of stars in this movie. Nathan is it Nathan Fillion. I forget how to pronounce his, his name, but yeah, like it's, it's got a lot of stars in this movie. Uh, one of the best casts ever. But people are now actually questioning with such an ensemble cast, how could they all possibly get enough screen time to really get their due? So I guess we're gonna see. Uh, that comes out next year, I believe. Um, the Rock is starring in the in the DC movie Black Adam, which apparently they already filmed like a million years ago, and for some reason the movie never released. But apparently this movie is still being made. There was a teaser of that. Um, the new Batman movie, The Batman, starring the same guy from the Twilight films. And I think what it really is is they're really hoping that this movie will be his breakout movie where people will stop mentioning Twilight. <laughs> I feel that way. Like, they really want to make this a really good movie so that this guy, what's his name, Pat Pattinson? Uh, I forget his first name. I think they really wanted that he could break out of the stupid, the, the mold, the typecast of that he was in the Twilight movies, right? Um, I saw the trailer for it, and am I, like, absolutely sold on the movie yet? No, but it actually did look pretty well done, at least the trailer. And apparently they're only about 25% done shooting this movie. <clears throat> Robert Pattinson is his name. Thank you, Hollywood Joey. Um... So, it looks pretty good, and in fact, in fact, I will say this, he, he looks like a pretty good Bruce Wayne. He looks like they, he, he actually does fit the character well, at least the way that he, they're, they're shooting him. He does look like a, someone who could actually be a Bruce Wayne character. Um, 
and I like that. Is he a convincing Batman? I don't know. But he does look like he fits the rich, like the, you know, the, the rich playboy stereotype. Um, so we'll see how this movie turns out. The thing that gets me, though, the movie looks more like a, cro- a, a, gr- a gritty crime drama. Think like the movie Seven or, you know, any, oh, Zodiac, right? That's kind of how the movie seems to be being portrayed in this trailer. It doesn't seem like it's being portrayed like a superhero movie whatsoever. It seems like it's going to be super gritty, and people are, are guessing that the villain is uh, the Riddler because it seems like he's asking Batman all these questions. But at the same time, they never call out in the trailer that it's the Riddler. And some people are asking, maybe it's not the Riddler. Maybe it's another character, and we're all being led to think it's the Riddler, and it's not. But I don't know. Um, looks good. It looks good. I mean, the, for a first teaser, it did a pretty good job of getting interest. So... That was good. And um, the only other thing is this Flash movie. There's going to be a Flashpoint movie starring The Flash, a cinematic Flash. But also it's going to have a lot of different Batman, including the Ben Affleck Batman, the Michael Keaton Batman. It's going to have like all these different Batman because the whole premise of this movie is that it's the multiverse. It's they're going through all these different universes and, and basically different Batman are going to team up with Flash. So that's kind of cool. You're going to see different renditions of Batman in the same Batman movie. Although Michael Keaton is definitely getting up there in age. So I, I don't know how he's going to be doing too many stunts and shit as Batman. But that sounds interesting to me. So so the DC Universe is alive and well. Even though, you know, since... since oh, and oh, by the way, I should mention the Zack Snyder Cut of Justice League. Right, which finally apparently is actually existing. It's going to be a four hour epic. Yes, I'm not kidding. It's going to be a four hour epic that's going to be released on HBO Max episodically next year in one hour segments. So, the movie that probably should have been released that's probably going to be fucking good instead of the, the cinematic atrocity that apparently was Justice League uh, is coming out. Also, I guess Wonder Woman has her new movie. I've, I never saw the first one. So, <laughs> I don't really care. I'm not really invested. But, you know, some people have said that the trailer looks good. And some people say the trailer looks like shit. I don't know. Kind of a mixed, mixed, mixed uh, bag there. So, <clears throat> okay. So, there you go. That was the DC event yesterday, which was pretty, pretty eventful. Lots of news came out of that. Um, today, today is supposedly the start of Digital Gamescom. So whether or not there'll actually be any interesting game news coming out today or tomorrow, I have no idea. I guess we'll see. It's just crazy that everything's digital this year because of COVID. And so many things happen and you don't even realize half of them are happening. Like, I didn't I didn't know there was a digital gamescom coming out this week until this morning I checked social media and they're tw- everyone's tweeting about it. I'm like, huh? I didn't even know this existed. So... I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see what happens, and maybe there'll be some interesting gaming news this week. That'll be nice. All right, guys, that's really all I got. I think uh, let's let's do some shout-outs. First of all, what I'd like to do is remind everyone, today is the last day of the streaming week for Twitch. What that means is that as of tomorrow, all tracking on leaderboards of contributions resets. So right now, I'm going to do shout-outs, and then we're going to update the leaderboards, and then I'm going to give shout-outs to those who've been the top contributors to my streams for the week. Um, today's the last day to get up on those leaderboards, because they will reset overnight to zero for Monday. Okay? <clears throat> okay. Um, let's, let's do some shout-outs, shall we? So, overnight, it was actually over two hours ago, Guitar Player 1939 took me $4.20 and said, I don't know if you saw the trailer for Wonder Woman... But Cheetah looks terrible. Yeah, I don't know. I I did not see the trailer for the new Wonder Woman movie. I never saw the first Wonder Woman movie. I'm really not too interested. Like I said, ever since the moment that I heard that that actress was being cast as Wonder Woman, I lost all interest. It's not convincing to me. Because it's a a skinny model body supposed to be this crazy, super-powered Amazonian. And it doesn't sell it for me. I mean, that's just my, my, my personal take on it. That's always been my take on it. Um... And so I had no desire to see the movie. But I've heard the movie's good. Maybe one day I'll finally see it. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. But no, I did not see the trailer. 
And I did not see this cheetah, or this version of cheetah, who is one of Wonder Woman's actually nemeses from the comics. It's interesting they put her in the movie. Um, RPG fan cheered. He says, looking forward to the positivity. Thank you, RPG fan, for the cheer. I appreciate that. It's the first cheer of the day. Let's get you up on the leaderboard for that. I'm looking forward to today. Like I said, people have been hyping this sea run of Nero Automata for three and a half years. So I certainly hope it lives up to expectations because so many people have been telling me and, and, and really requesting that I go back and I play this run. You know, the first two runs are one thing, but apparently this run is the one where everything goes crazy and revelations and everything. So let's see what happens, okay? Um, but... I'm curious if it will live up to expectation because the expectations have not been set so high by everybody. You know, <laughs> I guess we'll see. <clears throat> Ninstar Room cheered, and he has a giant paragraph here. But, I'll summarize it. He's basically saying, do I think that maybe it's lucky that I have post-nasal drip because maybe it lubricates me because I talk all day? No, that's not how it works <laughs> at all. <clears throat> The post-nasal drip is not beneficial lubrication. Post-nasal drip is when basically mucus overproduces and, and drips down the back of your sinuses into your throat constantly. <clears throat> Which is why a lot of the times you hear me snorting or clearing my throat a lot. It's why I have to clear my throat and I, I cough sometimes on stream. It's also why when I sneeze, my sinuses get screwed up like all day. If I sneeze, now my mucus goes into massive overproduction, and I end up having to blow my nose and do all this crazy stuff because of it. Okay? This is the furthest from anything beneficial that I could ever want. Okay? Uh, no, it doesn't help in any way, shape, or form. That was a ridiculous question. Okay. The Paradox 988 did a 95-bit cheer, which is the biggest cheer of the day now. And he says, Sony did say that the PS5 will launch in November, but I have a 100% feeling they'll delay it till early next year. I don't think so. They've actually were just asked recently. Again, they asked, are you guys still on pace this year? We haven't really heard anything in regards to pricing or release date. And they responded and said, no, we are 100% releasing this year. It is, you know, we have no issues right now whatsoever. Production is fine. Everything is good. We're good to go. So, Yeah. Um, I, I, I believe they are releasing this year. I really think this is the first time in history, okay, that you have the two console companies, Microsoft and Sony, and they are 100% playing a game of cat and mouse with each other where they're trying to one-up each other in the pricing. And so they are desperately waiting for one or the other to release the price so that they can one-up them, okay? Um... I don't know. I don't know if that strategy is going to work. Like I said, if these consoles are really coming out in November, logistically, you need to have pre-orders in place so they know how many they need to produce and they know where they need to ship them. And you need time to do that. You can't just wait till the last minute and expect that's going to happen, you know? Um, so I think... I definitely think they need to step it up and they need to get this stuff announced sooner rather than later. But again, they're really just waiting it out uh, and taking their time on purpose. So I guess we'll see what happens here. Um, but I do, I'm believing, I'm believing them. When they tell me, no, we're good to go, I really do feel like it, it is this, it's just this competition. And the funny thing about that is Phil Spencer has come out multiple times in the last couple of months saying, we don't care how many consoles we sell. It's not a big competition. The console wars have ended. It's not that like that anymore. Yeah, if that's the case, then why is Microsoft waiting just like Sony? It doesn't make any sense. If they didn't care, right? If they didn't care, they would just say, okay, Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X are coming out whatever week in November, and here's the pricing, and here's the accessories that are available. You can pre-order now. They would just do that. They wouldn't wait. It's obvious they're full of shit. <laughs> you know? But that's the thing. These guys, they think that they're so smart. But those of us who've been around the block, we know we know PR jargon and we know this bullshit. We know the game that they're trying to play with people. They, Of course they care about what fucking consoles they sell. What a stupid thing to say. 
I'm the head of a game studio, and I don't care how many consoles we sell. What a jackass. Anyway, RPG fan cheered. He says, is that what causes you to belch loudly too? No, that would probably be gas. I'm not, I'm not sure if you're aware, RPG fan, but mucus buildup has nothing to do with gas buildup in your stomach. It's co two completely different areas of the body. Um, completely unrelated. You should, you, you, you know, since you asked me that question, I strongly recommend you open up a book on biology and you study up a little bit um, to understand the difference between the two because they're very, very different. And that was a pretty ridiculous question. Um, Jethro's Main cheered and he says, people are going to buy the PS5 over the Xbox no matter what, Phil. It doesn't matter what Sony does and, and don't knows it. That message made sense until the very end. And don't knows it. I don't know what that means. But, I mean, fair enough. She, Jethro's Main, here's the thing. Okay? I think Xbox realizes, especially with losing Halo Infinite as a launch title, they realize they really have nothing at launch. What they know is that they're going to have games that already are available or are going to be uh, launched on Xbox One that will also be available for Xbox Series X and Series S. They're hoping the games will run better on the, con the new console. And they're hoping that the whole thing of sell, sell Xbox Game Pass rather than the games is going to work. Because I think what it is... Microsoft all along has been trying to say, we are the, the, the consumer-friendly console. We're not looking to rip you off and make a ton of money on you. We want you to buy the Xbox Series S or X so that you can get Game Pass and you can get all of our great games for however much it is a month. $10 a month, $15, $20, I forget, because I know you can bundle it in with the Xbox Live too, which you're probably going to want to do. And Microsoft has already come out and said the reason that there will be no console exclusives, I'll repeat that, there will be no console exclusives for the Xbox Series S and X at least for a year or two is because they want to be friendly to the consumer and they don't want people to be forced to buy a new console to experience their new games. But of course they're going to push that you'll get the best experience if you do buy the S or X. Okay? Um... So it's an interesting strategy. It is definitely an interesting strategy. All right. But I don't know if it's going to necessarily work. Um, They are probably banking on when this new console comes out, getting a ton of new Game Pass subscriptions. And that will be their, their revenue model. This, uh, outside of the fact that there's really no reason to buy the console. <laughs> um. I guess we'll see what happens when they finally release it. But, I mean, if it's a fair point. If someone is looking to only buy one of the two consoles this fall, why would you buy the Xbox Series S if you already have an existing Xbox console that will have all the new games anyway? Right? If you're absolutely a Microsoft fan and you love the Xbox One and you want the best graphical experience possible, you're probably buying an Xbox Series S or X, right? But if you're just a general consumer in general and you don't actually care what company you're supporting and you're looking for the console that's going to give you a value for your dollar, the PlayStation 5 makes more sense. It's going to have games that are exclusive for it fairly right away, right? These are games that are not going to be on PlayStation 4. You have to have the PS5 to play them. So... It's it's a it's a it's hype. It's exclusivity. It's just a lot of things that come into play here, and I definitely feel, definitely feel that despite the fact that people would have to individually buy the games for PlayStation Five, that people will be more inclined to buy the PS Five if that's what they're after. Okay, <clears throat> in the long term, sure, buying the Xbox Series X might make financially more sense because you'll get Game Pass and you'll get all their exclusives under it. But for me, as just as a consumer and a content creator, the way I see it is thus. If I can only get one console, I'm going to get the console with the games that are exclusive for it so I can play those games for you guys on stream. If all the other games for Xbox Series X can be played on Xbox One, why do I care to get an Xbox Series X? It's the same games. I'll be literally playing the same thing no matter what. I don't need the new console for it, 
right? That's my attitude. To, to me, it's, it's a difference of playing a whole new generation of games right away or getting a hardware upgrade. Right? It, it, it's, it's a no-brainer, especially because you know the cost is going to be probably equivalent. You know it's probably going to be like you know around $500 no matter which one you buy. So that's my take on it anyway. Um, Timbo Slice Cheery said, both systems are coming out this year. Well, Sony and Microsoft keep saying they are. Immediate already getting PlayStation 5 systems sent to them for review. Tons of images and videos are out of them being used. Eternal Napalm Cheer. He said, glad you're enjoying Nier Automata. You seem to be getting into the free flow of combat last session. Uh, fun fact, Nier Automata saved Platinum Games from bankruptcy and folding as a company. Oh, really? So I know Platinum Games have made a lot of different games, including Bayonetta and all that. But... I didn't know this game single-handedly saved them. That's interesting. I do know that it became a hit and a lot of people bought this game. I do know that. Timbo Slice Charity said, My system choices come down to what systems my gaming friends have. Uh, all my friends play on Xbox, so I use Xbox as my online gaming system, and I'll use PlayStation 5 for PlayStation 5-only games. There you go. Last Rambo cheered. He says, What is wrong with having only four games at launch for the PS5? Four games are a lot, and releasing too many games at one time will be a bad decision, as they will cannibalize each other. Well, I the way I see it, I, I agree with you, but I can see the other argument. I agree with you that if you want to have a launch library that's solid, you should probably have around five games that are console exclusive, and it's a variety, not all the same. That's the other thing. You can't have two shooters, because then it's like, now they're cutting into each other. You see what I mean? Um, <clears throat> but that's what I, I would say. Four to five games that are good games, by the way, not shovelware, and are console exclusives, is a great way to launch a console. But, the counter-argument is thus. Consoles are expensive. You're going to ask someone to dump $500 plus and then keep in mind the cost of those games as well, and keep in mind any other accessories you need to get, maybe a set of headphones or whatever you need to get for this console, and then you're going to play four games, and how long are you going to wait to use it again? You see? And I can understand that argument. Definitely I can understand it. Um, you don't want to buy a PS5, play it for a month, and then have it be a paperweight for six months. Waiting for the next game to come out for it. Right? The next the next exclusive or whatever. So, I can understand that. I can definitely understand that. Um, I think that's why a lot of these game studios have announced... That if you buy their games at release for PlayStation 4, you will get the free upgrade. Same thing with Xbox. If you buy the Xbox One version, you'll get the free upgrade to next gen. Because they want to say, listen, you, your console will not sit around if you really... Like, for example, if you buy Marvel's Avengers and you play it in September and October and you really enjoy it and you continuously play it co-op with your friends, when everyone runs out and buys the next gen console, you'll also for free be able to play the next gen version with your friends. You see? Um, they want that, they want that to feel like it's, there's a library already at launch of games. Now, sure, it's going to be games you've already played, but at least those games will work on the new console. I think that's an interesting new concept that we're seeing because <clears throat> we've never seen that before. It's always been new console, new games, not new console, same games carry over, right? They're having cases where it's a new console, same game carry over, but you have to buy it again. And this is the first console gen that's not the case where they're saying you can get it for free. So, that's very interesting. I don't know. We're going to see what happens. We'll play it by ear here see what happens. But we're in, we're in exciting times right now. <laughs> Jethro's main cheer. He says, I'm new here. But there really isn't any reason to buy an Xbox in my opinion. Every answer Xbox has for any question they get seems to just be Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass. Which isn't enough. People in general like great exclusive games. And I agree with you there. Again... Long-term bang-for-your-buck savings, yes, Xbox makes sense. But short-term enjoyment of your console, it makes zero sense. Like I say, if I buy an Xbox Series X, it's just a hardware upgrade. I could play all those games on my existing Xbox One. Compared with PlayStation 5, if I buy PlayStation 5, I'll be playing exclusive games right away. Well, that's why I paid the $500 for the new console, right? <clears throat> so I guess we'll see. I, I, I actually agree with you. Okay. Uh, let's get the shout-outs. Thank you, guys, 
This week has been an absolutely outstanding week for Cheers. You guys have cheered a lot and helped me out, and I really appreciate that. So let's give some thanks to those who have cheered this week, okay? So, in 10th place, we've got Mature Adult. In 9th place, Golden Nobles. 8th place, Ninstar Room. 7th place, Lice for Soul. 6th place, Sambuca 2020. 5th place, RPG Fan 32. 4th place, Shadow the Hedgehog. 3rd place, The Paradox 988. Second place, Only Ice Coffee. And in first place, mostly due to that very, very generous cheer a couple days ago there, um, Ladies Man. Thank you, Ladies Man, for that very generous cheer the other day. All right. Also, thank you to those who have gifted subscriptions to the channel this week. There were quite a few people, but in particular, here are the people that made the leaderboard. We got Kubi Contract, Angelo Bestia, Lunaba, Jose Martinez, Honest Fan, and Selpris, who each gifted a single subscription to the channel. Thank you, guys. Guitar Player 1939 has gifted three subscriptions to the channel this week. Ultima Cloud 7 gifted four subscriptions to the channel. Deech gifted five subs to the channel. And Only Ice Coffee gifted a very humble 45 subscriptions to the channel. Wow, thank you very, very, very much. Only Ice Coffee for helping out the channel that much. That is much appreciated. And uh, it's one of the major reasons why the channel has as many subs as it has right now. So thank you very much for that. Only Ice Coffee. Um, Barack Obama has tipped me. That is outstanding, Mr. Former President, sir. So Barack Obama tipped me $4.21. Let's get him up on the leaderboard. Okay. There we go. Our first tip of the day, by the way. So thank you for getting the tipping started, Mr. Obama. I appreciate that. All right, and he says the following. Don Matrick was the CEO of Platinum Games, hence why they almost went bankrupt. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, being that this is Barack Obama saying this, I don't think there's any reason to fact check anything he says. Obviously, we will take that as the gospel truth. Everything is always Don Matrick's fault. In fact, I would... I would predict we're going to find out later this year if the Xbox Series X is not successful at launch that it was Don Matrick all along who invented Game Pass. They had rehired him as a, cons a consultant. It was his idea all along. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be shocked. <laughs> I really wouldn't be shocked. Because remember, Don Matrick went from Microsoft to, wasn't it Zynga, that mobile games company? And then he tanked that company. And now I think he, like, washes cars or something. I don't know what he does. Maybe he sells, like, grilled cheese. But, man. They paid that guy millions of dollars to do absolutely nothing. <laughs> nothing useful, anyway, I guess I should say. <clears throat> okay. Alright, guys. So, it looks like that's it for pre-stream. Unless anyone else has any other questions or anything. Um, which I'll wait for for a second here to see if anyone does. But I think we, we've uh, covered the bases. And, uh, you know, we'll take a break quickly for me to use the restroom. And then when I come back, it's near Automata Sea Run. We're going to see how it goes. I'm excited to see what this Sea Run's all about. You guys are so hyped for it, right? Uh, three and a half years, you've asked me to do it. Craig Christ asked, how's Jasper doing? He's doing fine. He was running all around the house. He was doing crazy active stuff this morning. He's doing good. Thank you for asking. No question. No one has any questions? Do I drink a lot of soda pop? Ask Ipsilfin. No. I drink no soda whatsoever um, during the course of the week. Sometimes when we go out on our day out, I'll have a soda at like um, when we go out to dinner or something or lunch. Uh, yesterday I had a soda because we did DSP Tries It and I got a soda you know, with the food from Jack in the Box. Very rarely do I drink soda. I don't like it anymore. It's it basically, you know, it, a lot of reasons. Too much sugar, bad for the teeth. Um, if I go out I, and they have iced tea, I try to get unsweetened iced tea and then sweeten it myself with like a packet of sugar or whatever. But I don't really like drinking soda anymore. Am I going to have a back in the day segment for the future as caught a fade? Well, in reality, we did. In reality, we did. 
you might not realize it, but people ask me a story about me uh, and my, re my recruitment story about the army. So I told that story during the festival and people were like, why didn't you have a back in the day segment? Like, I actually did. That was it. <laughs> but people didn't realize it because I didn't officially call it a back in the day segment, right? Um, let's see here. Angelo Bestia says, is my back issue due to a nerve? I have a nerve issue in my neck and head. It's awful. My back issue is because I had a severely herniated disc in my lower back. And it was sadly, it was the disc that shoots the information via nerves through most of the legs and even the bowels. And that is why I had numbness and shooting pain in my legs for many years. Uh, today, it's much better. It's certainly not 100%. Like, I'm not... I can't go out there and run around and do physical stuff all day. I'll hurt my back. But it's way better than it was when I lived in Connecticut. I changed my lifestyle to not stress my back out. And since I did, you know, my back really doesn't have many issues at all anymore. Um, I do have nerve issues in my neck. Like, I have... It must be one of my vertebrae up there that it, it pinches this nerve if I sleep on it the wrong way or I twist it the wrong way. And I get shooting pain through my neck, shoulder, top of my arm all the way through the top half of my forearm into my thumb. And I even get numbness in my thumb. When this first happened, I believe it was 2012, and I couldn't feel my thumb for about two and a half months. So, yeah, I do get nerve issues as well. So, I'm sorry to hear that you get them too. Um, Let's see here. Cookie Monster said, Great send-off stream of Ghost last night. Thank you, Cookie Monster. I agree. I really enjoyed the game, and I was glad to see it. See it uh, get sent off in a nice way, getting the platinum. Worst says, what's my favorite fast food? I don't have one. What? Yorkman says, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot DLC has been out. It lasts for 15 minutes and is $25. What? Well, I don't know what you mean by that. The Dragon Ball Z Kakarot DLC that I'm waiting for, that I was told was coming out for the game and still hasn't, is that it was supposed to go through the entire plot line of Dragon Ball Super, which I've never seen. I've never, I've never saw the series. And everyone said, well, this will be a great way for you to experience it since it'll be interactive gameplay explaining the plot of Dragon Ball Super. I'm still waiting. And it, to my knowledge, it's still not out. What happened? I know that they had several expansion DLCs with new characters and stuff, and apparently there was a DLC that was like speculation on how Vegeta got to Super Saiyan God status because apparently it was never shown nor explained in the official Dragon Ball Super plotline. Okay? But outside of that, I never, you know, everyone told me at the launch of the game, oh, don't worry, it's coming, you're going to love it, it'll be really good to see you do it and experience it for the first time. And now here we are, what, it came out in February, so March, April, May, June, July, six months later, and there's still no word on it. I'm very skeptical. I'm very skeptical this is going to happen. So, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I guess that's it. Let's take a brief break. I'm going to go use the restroom. And when I come back, it will be near Automata Seaside Run. And let's see how it goes. Because I have no idea how it's going to go. I'm exciting. excited. All right. I'll be back soon. Thank you, guys. Play a little bit of music. And I shall return. All right. 